and welcome to this masked edition of <laughs> Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, and this is David Rushed Vibes Rushing, and we are here to rush the vibe with you, our tribe. Can I take this mask off now? Yeah, so uh, for those of you who are here in North Carolina with us, um, there's probably going to be an announcement the same day that this episode drops, which would be Wednesday, August 18th. 18th. Indoor mask mandates will be back in Charlotte, in Mecklenburg County. In unincorporated areas of Mecklenburg County, so we're inside. We wanted to get a little ahead of the uh, of the mandate, so we just wanted to uh, put our masks on and this is ridiculous. Be safe. Absolutely, we couldn't. We couldn't practice social distancing because the table isn't six feet long. But isn't it? I thought you measured it. Well, I'm not going to sit on the end of it, and so. But yeah, we're, this was all just for show, so we're going to take our masks off now. I can breathe again. Freedom! <laughs> <coughs> That's what people are yelling about, right? Freedom. Mm-hmm. Freedom from mass. Freedom Liberty. from... Restrictions. Freedom from tyrannical beasts. That is... Governor is locking, locking his state. So, a um, couple, couple different things going on here um, at Rush Vibes. Jessica has a surface... A PC device, and she has been through the ringer this week trying to figure out exactly how to use said PC device, Windows device. Um, I wanted to match her energy, so I normally have my iPad up here, but instead I have my I have my Surface Duo. So um, she's got a Surface, I got a Surface. So I guess Surface vibes, maybe. <laughs> um, here on here on Rush Vibes. Also, you notice our R is gone because we decided to do something a little different. And give you guys, you know, some insight into us. I guess as we go along, we get closer to our uh, finale episode of season one of Rush Fives. I guess we're going to end with our story or whatever. But we had our own personal stories long before we had a story. And part of that. I still have a personal story. (laughs) Part of that is when we were kids. So we got we got a little. Our little vibes. Our little little vibes photos. You got Jessica over. It's, It's a picture of a picture. So sometimes when you have parents send you pictures of old you know, send you old pictures, you end up getting a picture of a picture. So that's the case here. I think that's the case with both of these actually, but this one um, has a little bit of glare on it, but see a little Jessica with her little smirk, a little attitude, a little attitude. Like I swear, I see, I see so much solace or oldest. Um, and, and Jessica right there, all the attitude. I don't know why I had that much. All the spaz, all the, all the just, just, I probably didn't want to take the pictures. (laughs) See, it's, you know, if you look closely, I'm going to zoom in. There's when no, we, there's I'm, no, no negative. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to zoom in in post-production. So you guys are going to see. I want, I'm going to guide you. If you look very closely, you can see the moment that negative African energy was born. And it was right here in this photo. <laughs> you can see it. It's, 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 I the was seed was planted. Adorable. And, you know, over here. You got my, you got Dude's little G, suspenders. Oh, look little, like G Urkel. little G, Dave, look at, check the bow tie. Okay. The suspenders. Who dressed you? With the jeans. You know what I'm saying? And I got the, I got the, I got the little dapper pose. You know what I'm saying? I was ahead of my time because everything <laughs> that's in this picture is literally almost back in style. Look, here's behind bow ties, this time. suspenders. These are probably high waters too. Probably so you know, are. so you Maybe know those are back. Probably wearing those Jesus sandals. Those. <laughs> if you know, you know. We're not going to talk about that. We are. So uh yeah. So throwback vibes, surface vibes, rush vibes. We're back. Uh we still got the got the fall decor up. Still. Fall still. I don't even know that fall has officially started. Oh yeah. I guess not. But I'm not used to I'm not used to being ahead on our seasons when we when we decorate. I'm used to kind of being Half behind. Through. Yeah. Almost over. Being no, behind. fall is my favorite season. So, um I s- took the opportunity to to really go out. And I still I still have a longing to go back to the dollar store and get 
more. My non-alcoholic uh, Heineken beer over here. I'm going to keep it out of frame because I don't want to distract anybody. Who are you going to distract? I don't know. Somebody <laughs> may be distracted and be like, yeah, I was drinking on Rush Vibes. Although we've been drinking yep. for every single episode. So Goodness know. gracious. Yeah. So what's up? What's up is um, we're getting ready to have uh, indoor mask mandate mm-hmm. again here in Mecklenburg County. Good thing. I actually, go I think anywhere. it's is, is it Mecklenburg or is it the state? I, I thought remember. it was just Charlotte. It might be. It and, might be Mecklenburg. And unincorporated Charlotte, which is us, because we're yeah. actually in unincorporated Charlotte. Yeah, it'd be the beauty of being able to put Charlotte on our uh, address, postal address, but not have to pay any of those taxes. It's, a, it's a wonderful, ridiculous thing. taxes. Like we're the actually the people who don't live in Charlotte, but. Claim, claim Charlotte, from, but claim we Charlotte. are from Charlotte because there's some people that they'll be from. What's the city? Mooresville, and tell people they live in Charlotte. No, your behind lives in Mooresville. Like, don't don't scapegoat Charlotte. Like, oh, I live in the big city. No, you live in Mooresville. Same for people who live in Union County. No. You you better make sure you let people know how far outside of the Charlotte city limit you live. Don't go saying you live in Charlotte. You don't live in Charlotte because people are going to come visit you and they're going to be real disappointed when they're put in Marvin and they're like, what's a Marvin, North Carolina? I don't know. It's not Charlotte. So, sorry. That's just a pet peeve of mine. When pe- <laughs> I just can't stand when people say they live in the big city. Reference the big city like, oh, we live 30 minutes out of Charlotte. Some of it is it's it's avoiding that awkward conversation. The awkward part of is it to say I live 30 minutes out of Charlotte? The awkward part of the conversation that comes from when you actually tell them where you live, where you're from. They're like, where? That's why you you make sure you don't. And you you just say the the be the biggest city nearby or you say the biggest landmark nearby. So like for me, where I'm from, Woodbridge, Virginia. Stand up, Y'all can see Nova. That. Y'all can that's see what we do. Two up, two down. Represent all yep. day long. I would tell people. I would meet people and say, "Hey, I'm from Woodbridge or Dale City." And be like, "Where?" I just say, "It's DC." Or I would say, thirty minutes south of of DC. See, that's what you're Or do. I would say, or I would say Potomac Mills Mall because it was is actually like a pretty famous mall. Although it was, I don't know, I don't know if it I've is never now heard of it. anymore. Well, you're not everybody. Is it like you're Lennox one Mall where people are getting shot there now? I don't know. I don't keep up with too many. Most of the people who I keep up with from there, I don't think still live there anymore. But, you know, I don't I don't know. I don't really keep up with malls in general because it just seems like malls are the new yeah. gun range. As we had Concord Mills here that that uh, man, they, there's a new curfew in place. Yeah. So if you're under 18, yeah. I think you have to have a chaperone. Uh, after a certain certain what time of night, I think it's like six. And they like, do they ID you? Like, I guess, I guess so. There's only way to verify that if you if you have questions. I should if go you, just if you're to not see sure. If anyone thinks I'm eighteen? No, I don't. I don't. You know, I, the, the last time I went to a mall, not to see a movie. You know, when there's a movie theater to connect to the mall, um, I can't remember. I think it was it was pre pandemic. I think I went to pick up an iPhone or some Apple device mm-hmm. from from North Lake up here. And you know it was it was in and out. I don't um I don't rock with mall because it's like I don't know if it's just because I'm getting older, or if this is just like the demographic at the mall is getting younger. Probably a little bit of both. I'm definitely I'm getting older, mm-hmm. but uh, it's just like I don't. It's the thuggery. That's really no, what it is. It's not thuggery. It's just I don't. It's the thuggery. It's adolescence is what it is, and, and I and, and I don't. Is thuggery. And this is not a race thing because there there's white adolescence thuggery, is not there's Asian thuggery, with, with there's thuggery. black thuggery. I don't like thuggery. I won't go to the mall unless I'm going to a mall that has its own, a store that has its own entrance. I don't do the food court anymore. I don't do any of those center stores because that's where the thuggery takes place. That's where the broke kids can afford to shop. Uh, no, I'm going to Macy's. I'm going to Dillard's. I'm going to Belk. They have their own exits and a lot of their clientele don't need to be in the mall with guns. So yeah, not doing it. Everything else, Amazon, if it sends your dude to space, cool. Um, but I'm just not, I'm not going, I don't go in the mall. You know so, what I do? Outside malls, like Burkdale, like uppity, uppity places where it's like, 
oh, we don't need a mall. You just walk outside and then you go into the store. Then you come back outside and you go into another store. External malls. That's that's what I'm here for. But mall malls? Nah. Nah. Get out of here with that. So uh, I, I disagree that adolescence is not synonymous with, with thuggery. What it is synonymous with is just rec- uh, recklessness. Reckless thuggery. Uh, bad decision. Poor decision making. Poor decision by thugs. Um, and just like, just like a lot of, like, you know, it's just the pandemic. You know, I don't just like a whole lot of people in, in one space, although I did go to my very first wrestling event. This is a, this is a, just a crazy segue and crazy pivot. Went to my first wrestling event <coughs> last weekend, this past weekend, uh, here in Charlotte, the Queen City, uh, WWE Super Tour or something like that. Um, my little brother, uh, big little brother, Alan, turned 31. Shout out. Happy, happy birthday. I didn't realize Alan and I were born the same year. I always, like, forget and then remember and then I'm like, when did this you get a friend that's so young? This isn't about you. Well, he was on the football team in college. I mean, and, I know, um, but I'm just like. I used to. It's so funny. I used to haze him. Like, well, I didn't haze him, but I would. I would pick on him because upperclassmen. Huh? You're admitting to hazing. Yeah, I didn't haze him. It was just he would just be like, "Hey, let me get a ride to to practice." I'm like, now you about to walk, and then I like <gasps> drive away, and then I would stop, and then I let him get in the car. Um. Like so he uh we we had we had talked about he had sent me like a picture of tickets or something a few weeks ago when I was in Tampa and I was like yo let's go I'll buy I'll buy the tickets your birthday let's go um so we get out there I don't know who anybody is I haven't watched wrestling like since I was a teenager probably and um there's a, there's a lot of people out there like I was texting Jess the whole time I'm like yo this thing is it's thick out here I told him they like, were people, they were brewing a new variant <laughs> <laughs> we started like, people, dropping random like, Greek people letters. were just people were just out and um you know that's a testament to vaccines and how people feel uh, comfortable going out once they've been fully vaccinated or people just you know just going raw riding dirty if they uh if they haven't been vaccinated but just people just being out and enjoying things that people used to enjoy before before uh before covid so we were out there um pretty pretty good seats and uh the little kids out there was just wild like six seven eight year olds like you suck (laughs) (laughs) you're a loser get out of here she's taking solace she's so sweet i would love to see her these little kids were off the chain it's funny because i remember now what i was like when i would be watching wrestling like in my room it, like in here just like just having a fit if the wrestler i wanted to win wasn't winning or whatever uh, but one thing i noticed as an adult and having been so far removed from it you realize how much they actually don't wrestle there's like 40 percent of it is just like um like Sticking antics right like out. walking no like walking to the walking to the ring you know they gotta do the little performance and then they you know they, they they bounce around the ring and act like you know they're talking trash or whatever that's like maybe like 40 percent of it is like actual wrestling um 40 50 percent but it i mean it's it's cool uh it's it's entertainment i was entertained um and I'm, i actually feel like i've been sucked back in um due to to one wrestler i guess roman reigns is his name dude just has incredible swag um it's just he's like a champ I, he's some sort of champion maybe the the heavyweight champion or whatever um but his intro music got me hyped he was just walking down you know what I'm saying? And he was just slow, like a slow walk to the ring. He got into the ring and then he was like, he got the mic. And he said, Charlotte, acknowledge me. <laughs> 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 Yo, I was like, oh, snap. So I was, I was like the little kids. I was screaming as if I had popcorn out of and throwing it. But um, I don't know how we got onto that. But uh, you segued. Yes, I did segue. But that was fun. So for all you wrestling fanatics out there who have been to events and stuff, I get it. I want to go to another one, but, um, yeah, but other than that, you know, even, even there sitting, sitting in the seats, you know, I was sitting next to Alan and then there was a lady till I was just kind of like tight, you know? Um, but you know, some of that is just kind of conditioning. Like we've been conditioned to not, uh, you know, want people up on it. So we'll just have to kind of get used to that being a thing again, if you're going to be in certain spaces. But, um, that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, definitely don't do malls anymore. I just, I just order bring it to me mm-hmm. or if i if i gotta i'll shop online like i've been shopping for that target target got some good stuff you haven't done the drive through though no i'm not done the drive through. place the order and then i see the, i see people the always running up. yeah running running stuff out it's to super convenient because there have been days where like i order something 
I had to order diapers for Savi, and we were. You ordered diapers from Target. Yeah, because she was out of diapers, and the Amazon um, subscription was like three days off. So, and you know, all she does is drink. So she goes through some diapers. And she had fallen asleep, but fortunately I had put the drive-up order in, so I didn't have to wake her up and then take her into the store, and then she's going to be crabby. And she's like an old man when she doesn't get her nap. She's like so cranky. So, you know, the lady like walked up, saw that she was sleeping, whispered, handed me the diaper. So it, it's just, it's super convenient. Um, and it's just, it's quicker than, you know, all those other services that you'd have to order the day before or pay a fee. Like Target just be like, hey, yeah. we bring it out to you. We got you. So. Yeah. Target is. I like Target. Superior. Target, Thuggish Target. stuff doesn't happen in Target. Stop. Thuggish stuff happens everywhere. I feel like you think I'm using thuggish. The thuggish, rockish, Because the word thuggish is synonymous with blackness. No, it's not. First not. of all, number one, it is not. I'm not it is, saying it, it is. is not. Your Don't, response no. to me saying no. thuggish. Uh, it, no, I'm just white, saying there that, are some white thugs. No, I, you ever come across a white thug? Yes. Yes. I understand that. There's that, some Asian thugs. Now, some Asian thugs. Yo, I don't, I don't like crossing Asian thugs. The thoughts and opinions expressed <laughs> by Jessica are not I indicative of crossed, the overall views of us here have, at Rush Five Studios. I have crossed some Asian thugs, and I'm like, y'all go a different kind of hard. Did like, you cross the street? Forget, forget Juntao. Like these thugs are. Did you just? <laughs> you really just said Juntao. Wow. <laughs> these thugs. I are appreciate so the the Russia. That's, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm impressed. Uh, and then and then you got your Latin. So it's like these teenagers are of all different. <laughs> Creeds Where's and they're tower? thuggish. Where's your tower? <laughs> I'm uh, surprised I remembered his name so quick. That you say that was pretty good. Thank you. So I'm, I just wanted to clarify that I'm 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 blanketing the word thug. Nancy Clapp. Thank you. Thank you. Stop. I'm blanketing the word thug for all. Okay. So yes, I understand that thugs come in all Creeds. shapes, <laughs> forms, and, and races or whatever. I just think that it's unfair to call little kids who we were at one point in time. I wasn't allowed to put them all, so I, I, yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't either. See, so um, it wasn't us. We weren't thugs. They, they were our age. We had friends who we hung out with and who they were, were allowed. Thugs. Who were allowed? No, they. <laughs> okay. So moving on. Uh, we're aiming to keep this episode short. Probably. I got an energy burst, so it's probably not going to be short. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to cut her mic, and we're gonna we're gonna wrap short. Um, because we're recording this on Tuesday night. Um, as as our children get older, uh, the two on 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 Earth, and then the They're other all on Earth. and they and the other one that's still in the womb. Um, they as they get older, it's becoming increasingly difficult to get them to bed at a at a decent hour. So. Uh, we we ended up having to record on Tuesday night, so um, because that's really because I fell asleep. You got home late yesterday. I got home late Monday. I fell asleep yeah. Sunday in putting Solace to bed. Yeah, and so, he was just like, "Let's let's go to bed." So uh, we can move into our first topic. You know, it's Did have you have a first topic? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was the most unconvincing. Yeah. That was like someone who's trying yeah. to back. Like, yeah. That was. I've yeah. never heard your tone. I've never that's what I you remember the the beach story. That's what I hit the girl with. So maybe that's why she <laughs> took took a liking to my my friend instead of me. Um, you know, what, let's take let's let's take a break okay. and let's come back and then we'll we'll get into our stuff. All right, so we'll be right back. All right, and we're back. So we're back. Um, I'll just have you guys know Jessica was being really disrespectful before we before we came on. Lies, um, propaganda. So uh, you when you talk about thuggery. Mixed with a little bit of negative African energy, and you have, you have my wife. I don't know how to do. So I don't know how to do gang signs with my hands. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about. I wanted to get your opinion on this, uh, this Brittany, uh, Brittany Renner thing in PJ Washington. Mm -hmm. um, I know you've you've heard about it. I have, and I know you probably don't know who those two people are. I know I've I've known bundle of Brittany for years. I used to follow her on IG. So we're just gonna go and jump straight to the Instagram handle, just bundle of Brittany, like y'all, like y'all go back. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. So who's Brittany? Because one time I showed her to you, oh, you and did. I was like, if you don't wipe that grin off your face, and I was like, oh, is she, like, you think she's cute? Is she your type? You were like, I mean, her butt's big, but she ain't got no hips. That's exactly what you said. So I don't know why you had that huge that sounds, grin. That sounds uh, a very David thing to say. I don't know why you had that huge grin on your face, because you said she wasn't your type. I am, I am, I am a certified 
Oh my gosh! Don't say it. Bootyologist. No, you're not. So, um, so that's not a thing. I no, it, it definitely is. I have it's I got the plaque on my on my office you wall. You lucked out and married a woman with a big butt. That don't mean you're some kind of butt specialist. No, I am. <clears throat> um, I specialize uh, in the discovery. <laughs> what? And the analysis. Uh, what of, does that even mean? Of of uh, of, of, <coughs> of sizable, you know, sizable booties, uh, all booties, you know, petites, uh, larges, um, and everything in between. Um, you see I, what I got to do. With. I appreciate a good butt, and that's fine, right? Like before we get into Brittany, let's 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 be real, okay? Let's not act like those of you in marriage or in relationships don't assess. Uh, the physiques uh, or the physique of, of strangers who you see on the street or of celebrities forbid, who you see, who you see say, on TV. I say a man is handsome. He gets he gets into this territorial. What'd you just say? What'd you talk about? Who are you looking at? White. <laughs> so, uh, so well, I mean, Jesse and I have been out together and I've said, hey, Jess, over there. I can't even lie. Exactly. I, and we'll look at what we just be like. I've played out, told him, look at her, no, no, <laughs> look yeah, at her yeah, butt. My, God put all of us here for a reason. Um, and we're all God's creatures. So when we have an opportunity, we need to appreciate God's handiwork. Which is why I am a certified bootyologist. Oh <laughs> Do y'all see what I have to deal with? It's, it's, it's ordained. This is what I have to deal with. Anyway, so Brittany. Delivered. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know how I You don't came know Brittany. Ac- I don't know uh, how I glad. came across like how our cross our paths cross. But um Do you actually know she's, her? She's I feel like I know her through somebody. Like I don't know her, know her, this but is, I know somebody who knows her and break, that's this how is, this is breaking news on Rush Vibes. I had no I idea. I know Vixens, I guess. Um I have a whole other life that just David's just not in the know of. Um it's easier that way. Plausible deniability. Um so Brittany is Can y'all like can you like introduce us? <laughs> I'm just fine. Most definitely not. Brittany is is what some might refer to as having whorish tendencies. I've heard uh I've heard her referred to as a uh, as a bop. You know I don't get down with this new terminology. Oh, okay, because I, I didn't know what it meant. Is either. that an acronym or is that the term? I don't know. I is think it, it's just a it term. Like, is it like WAP? I think it's I think it's 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 uh it's a degree uh, classier than um a hoe. Yeah, so it's like you don't necessarily you you. You're very uh, direct in your goal. Like you look for high value men yeah. who you can who you can be with, who can shower you and take care of you. Mm-hmm. But you're not necessarily uh, just throwing An escort. Or yeah, all yeah. That. You're not you're not throwing yourself out. You don't may not even you know have sex with them. You just your your looks right and your yeah. appeal is enough. She's a pretty girl. She's yeah, a beautiful is, is, girl. is enough for for a man to uh, to want to uh, shower you and. Yeah, so she's yeah. known around the Hollywood circuit as essentially being that her her goal is to, I don't want to say trap, but her her goal has all she's she's been vocal about. She wrote saying, a book. Yeah, she wrote a book. She's talked about like the different celebrities, B C D list celebrities that she's like been engaged with, not engaged by marriage, but like had you know encounters with. Um, but people have known her as the type. I'm just trying to essentially get a baby by a wealthy man and that's going to pay my bills. Like she's, she's, she's not, she's, she does, she's smart in the sense of she knows how to acquire that, but she's, she's Acquired. not the type that is like, Oh, I, I aspire to be an accountant or, you know, have a foundation. She, she's, she wants somebody of means to take care of her or she wants a baby that is from someone of means, and this has gone around between you know football players, basketball players, athletes, actors, rappers, almost rappers. So, so people know this about her. Sure. So the uh, that shirt was very no, 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 no. I, I want to make sure we, that we that we we don't spend too much time on on, on background and, and character building and, and arc and all that. This is unnecessary. Uh, it's very necessary. The thing is, is that she. Uh, I guess became involved with a basketball player named PJ Washington now plays for the local Charlotte Hornets. Uh, they began dating back when he was in Kentucky, I and believe. He was like 18. He was like 18. He was kind of young. She was 26. So So uh they recently had uh she recently had a son. Um and I guess at some point something something happened where 
they were no longer each other's. You know, that's that's how you can tell someone's broken up. They're no longer showing up on each other's Instagram. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then it just became this. The story just spread like wildfire on uh, on on. I saw it on on Twitter that she basically used him to get like, and it was throwing absurd numbers out, like two hundred k a month yeah, for for eighteen years, and that's that's not the case. But um, an audio did come out, um, I believe. Uh, of Britney saying basically like um, like a PSA to women like if you want to trap some of these stupid athletes or whatever all you got to do is is bang one and then you know you got your you got your golden ticket in a in the form of a baby so uh, it's been it's been all the rage all over uh, social media people you know because people just love to to see others uh, make fun of others misery mm -hmm. um, so you know talking about it memes and gifts and and, and and jokes at the expense of PJ and BJ uh, to his credit not to his credit but just acknowledging the fact that you know he's been really um, outwardly emotional about the fact that you know he hadn't been able to see his son and there's always two sides to a story but uh, if you follow his his Twitter or, or Instagram or whatever you know he's kind of going through it um, I think here recently he was able to to see to see the um, um, his child and um, I think they're still on the on the outs in terms of their relationship, the adults. But uh, I don't know if, it, if I don't know if it's it's a case of slow news, news week, news weeks. Uh, but it, it, it kind of dominated my my feeds. I was just curious your opinion on it. Like, how do you feel about the fact that there are women who say, "Yes, this is who I am, and this is what my goal is," um, and uh, as a result. It would seem um, it, it has a bit of a negative effect on the relationship between, you know, the, the father and their and their child. How do you like what's your opinion on women who just basically are are uh, feel emboldened to kind of be who they are and take on that that goal for their life? First of all, I mean, I'm not a purpose. I'm, I say? I'm not a fan of her and how she went about it, because if the role was reversed and he, PJ was an 18 year old um, female and Brittany was a 26 year old man. Uh, people would have come for him and said, Oh, you know, he's a rapist and sh that's a child, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and we know that, you know, most men uh, mature slower than women. So I definitely know that she, I personally feel that she took advantage. I beg your pardon. You, you heard what I said? No, scientifically, this is yeah. true. Um, so science, I think she, I, I feel for a fact that she took advantage of him. She manipulated him. I feel, I feel for him. I think, yes, there are women who are, who set themselves up for just essentially breeding a child that is going to be their, their check. Um, I won't say that they won't love that child. I won't discredit them. You know, most most women, you just have a natural maternal instinct that, that kicks in. So I'm not going to make the assumption that, okay, they look at this kid as just a payday. They don't love him. They don't care. I'm sure she loves and adores this baby. Um, but the means of which she went about getting this child is not cool. And yeah. I, and in this day and age, that inf like that information gets out. It's not the 90s. It's not the 80s. There's social media. She's written a book. There's now audio. People are having conversations about it. So this child's going to grow up knowing that my mom intentionally trapped my child, my, my father, to have me. And that child may, you know, it might affect their self-esteem. It might affect how they feel about themselves, that the only reason why I'm here is because my mother had a plan because she didn't want to work um, or didn't want to work legitimately. And I'm her, I'm her cash cow. So... I don't support women who do this. I don't support the fact that and we're not in it, so we don't know. We here, here and see PJ's side. I've seen some posts. He looks like he's heartbroken. Um, I don't even know if he's 20 yet, but... Um, he's 20, I'd say he's about 21, 20, 21. He's okay. young. He's definitely young, though. Okay. Um, but he, want, you can, he wants to be a dad, and that's the... At least he thinks he does. He thinks he does. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just, even if he was, doesn't want to be a, a dad, I think he recognizes that he has a seed and he wants to be part of this child's life. And that's where you get these situations where, you know, you know, people have deadbeat dads and, you know, women are 
railing into these men about how they're useless and they don't do anything and they're not part of their kid's life. And then you have these dads who are like, okay, me and your moms, because they always say moms, uh, we're not together, we're not cool, but I love you, I want to be in my kid's life, I want to be involved. Who is they? The dads. What do you mean? I feel like the dads. What do you mean those people? I feel like the dads who always want to be involved be like, yo, me and your moms. Like we ain't cool. I tell Salas that all the time. And it's me, like, me and your you only moms. have one mom. Me and your mom's not feeling mom. each other right Stop now. Stop putting the S on things. But um, then all they're these. punished. And then moms are going to make their dad, like these kids think that their dads are these guys who don't want to be involved. And they really do. So the only person who suffers at the end is the child because the mom is using the child as a, as a pawn. And the child, you know, you're going to he- take in the information that you're getting from your mom because that's the source. Um, and you don't know that your dad actually wants to be part of your life. You don't know yeah. that your dad is fighting to be involved with you outside of just money. He wants to build a relationship with you. So I, I'm against it. I, I hope she turns around. Um, honestly, being a mom, you know, I'm obviously not a single mom. But if I were a single mom and I had a, a partner, a co-parent who was wanting to be involved, look. Y'all need days off. Take these little, take these people you co-made and keep them for a few weeks. Like, I don't understand why you wouldn't want a break anyway. But um, that's just my thought. So I I think she's, I don't want to say a terrible human being, but because I don't know her side of the story. But I don't think that she, if she is actively going out of her way to keep this child away from their father, I mean, I don't personally think that's great parenting. If he's not a risk to the child, if he's not going to harm the child, if he's not going to, you know, be detrimental to the child, I think it's more beneficial for a child to grow up with their father as their father figure than to, you know, wonder. And it doesn't help that his father, their father's in the public eye. Like, dude's a basketball player. So I think I've seen something that he might be going to court. First things first, rest in peace, Uncle Phil, for real. The only father that I ever knew. Not me, Yo. but Jake, Jake Hall said that. This is um, why I can't. Uh, I don't know. Probably I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if there was a court custody thing. Um, it's usually how these how these situations end. I still think he should have been smarter. The like, way they go. I mean, he's 18. He was 18, but he didn't have no friends. Wrap it up. Put a bow on it. I mean, I don't, I don't think that they were. he was 18 when... When, they, she, when she started, she started scouting him. Like she, she scout like she was like she was, like, she used like from Kentucky from as her, how, farm, her farm system. From how it's played out, she was scouting him. She was grooming him. This is some. This is some legit lifetime manipulation. Like she was, she was taking advantage of a child. I think. I think uh, it was. Yeah, I mean, as as an eighteen year old, if uh, highly attractive. Uh, 26 year old woman had approached me or I approached her and, and, and I realized that I had she not have pr- to approach you. You wouldn't have approached her that I, that I would have had, um, <laughs> you know, I would have had, had a shot. Uh, then, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd have been, you know, all big eyed and, 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 and whatever. And, and, you know, thought of, thought of that as a win, a big win, victory. Big accomplished, mission accomplished, like Bush said. <laughs> I'd have thought, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm goat, goat status, baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I get that, but um, I think it's just a case of you never really. I mean, every relationship is a, is a risk, especially when you're when you're young, um, and you know you're in the public eye, or the person you're one of the, one of the two people in the relationship are in the public eye, uh, be it be it like on a massive scale, or maybe like you know social media fame, famous. Um, it, there's always there's always a risk that uh, maturity may not be there, or you know you may not know that person as well as you think you do, and then you get yourself into a situation where oops, there's a baby. So it's like okay, now you kind of really see who 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 people are when uh, when there are kids involved, and then there's money at stake and and whatnot. So I think my my thought on the whole thing is it's just unfortunate, uh, you know. Um, it just is. It's, it's unfortunate that uh, that there's one, mainly that there's a child involved. So, like you, I think you mentioned it. Like I don't know if anyone's ever thought about like you know this this young this this boy is going to grow up, um, and the internet nothing on the internet is ever deleted, right? It just it may, it may fade to the back, but it, it can it's always just a search away. 
and he's going to learn about this at, at some point and you know what kind of effect is is that going to have on him um what kind of effect is it going to have on him and the the person that uh he chooses to be in a relationship with when he's when he's old enough like what kind of partner is he going to be like what kind of psychological effect is it going to have on him so those are the things i'm thinking about and things that i probably wouldn't have thought about before you know i guess at this point six years ago um before i became a parent but you know that's that's kind of where my mind is you know people can people go from relation you know relationship to relationship to relationship you can always find somebody out there to to claim as your significant other or, or become an item with but you know when you're talking about kids and you know their development you know how what their childhood is like with the environment that they grow up in you know, has a very serious and lasting impact on the person that they ultimately become. So my heart breaks for the little boy. Hopefully they can, they can kind of work this thing out and, you know, be cordial uh, if, if they're not going to be together um, and realize that his development and his growth and, and, and his health mentally and, and physically, spiritually uh, is, is what's most important, not, you know, uh, going back and forth on on social media, so that's She's probably going to get a reality show. Real bops of wherever she lives. Bops. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's. Um, I just wanted to get on here, and so we we could have something to talk about other than our little our little kid pictures. I guess this is a very kid centric uh, episode of, of Rush Vibes, but um, definitely wanted to get your your take on that. I know we haven't had we haven't had a whole lot of time to talk this week or last week. Um, I'm kind of into my new job, and Jessica's into her new job, and on conf- conference calls and and doing her thing. Uh, and then in between, we're kind of you know being parents as well. So we haven't had a whole lot of time to to talk, which makes me very uh, um, happy that we have this platform where we can set aside thirty minutes to an hour and whatever to. You know what else I noticed? Our talk. kids don't let us talk. They don't. They every, every time we start speaking, <laughs> somebody will little, come up with these tiny humans, especially Solace. Solace can be sitting for thirty minutes watching her tablet, watching the TV, doesn't have a word to say. And yeah. David will inhale to ask me something or to say something to me, and then she's like, "Excuse me, mommy." And it's always the random, it's the most random thing that has no relevance to anything in life. Nope. Not at all. Like today, she she was talking about, can you eat and die? Like, can you die while you're eating? What? This this is it's what like, you want to interrupt? It's possible. I mean, it's good. I guess. It's possible. So yeah, yeah, our kids don't. Our kids don't really make it easy for us to have conversation. We yeah. don't go to bed at the same time. Um, we don't wake up at the same time. Yeah. I'm so like before. we're in the house, but we're, we're like, I moved my office upstairs. So we're just not crossing paths. Like we'll be in the house and I'll like, we're texting each other. Um, but yeah, so it is, it is nice to have a little conversation, but even if we did have time, I feel like certain topics we don't talk about so that we can talk Discuss about on, on the podcast pod. without bias opinion. That's it. So I think it's a good spot, a good spot to stop. Uh, this right is really short. Thirty-eight minutes. It's going to be the shortest episode of Rush Vibes ever. Other than I'm our, sorry, y'all. Other than, no, I'm not. Because <laughs> I got. I have more content. Uh, as soon as we're done, we got, I got to go edit it. So um, maybe you should do a like a follow up uh, video on your Instagram and talk about things that you want to talk about to the J the J Hive. So no uh, yeah, episode thirty nine of Rush Vibes in the books. We. Uh, I'm very appreciative of everybody. Be sure to catch up with us on social media. Uh, we're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. And, um, you know, if you're watching on YouTube, um, please do hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. And if you're listening to us, you know, be it on Spotify, Apple, Google. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. Be sure to leave us a review uh, if you if you enjoyed us. And if you've just recently been introduced to us, welcome to the Vibe Tribe. Um, this is... Uh, a smaller sample of, of what we normally do. But like I said, we wanted to keep this one extra short so that we can uh, get it out to you guys tomorrow. So um, Ooh, I got one more plug. Sorry. If you are in Charlotte this weekend, uh, we will be, I will be with uh, one of my side streams of revenue. We'll be at one of the 
sponsors at the Charlotte Brunch Festival. So that's taking place this Saturday. I believe it starts at noon and it might be running till three or four, but several Charlotte restaurants will be uh, present and they'll be sampling or serving their brunch staples. Um, there's some, there's a champagne sponsor and then there is my brand, um, that will also be sponsoring and giving away samples. So by all means, get your tickets. You can search them on Instagram, CLT Brunch Festival. Um, I will probably be sharing stuff on my personal Instagram about the po- about the event. But yeah, if you need something to do on Saturday, definitely come through, say hi, get a sample. Social distance and wear a mask because there's a mask mandate. You just cut me off? No. I did not. Oh, you pressed the button. You totally, you you were totally prepared <laughs> to cut me off. Wow. Um, we should next episode we'll talk hey, about Saul is asking hey, if I still we, love uh, Daddy we, and why. We, we love you guys. <laughs> we appreciate your support. Episodes every Wednesday. We'll see you guys next week or see you on Saturday. We out. Now, now they bring me this far, let me down